This episode is presented to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV, you can watch your favorite team's out-of-market Sunday games, plus watch up to four games at once with multi-view. Don't miss the race to the playoffs. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just $39 when bundled with YouTube TV, where you get even more football. Visit YouTube.com slash Spotify offer to sign up now. Lowest price on YouTube TV with base plan. Rest of 2023 season. Terms and embargoes apply. No cancellations. Reboot your credit card with Apple Card, the credit card created by Apple. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that you can now choose to grow in a high-yield savings account that's built right into the Wallet app. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone and start growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility requirements. Savings accounts provided by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. From your morning podcast to your afternoon playlist, State Farm knows you personalize your entire day. And that's why State Farm helps you personalize your insurance with the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It offers coverage options that help protect what you care about most at an affordable price just for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. it again with another episode of the shades of blue soccer show yes we are back at it again still here we're not dead yet we don't really know what's going on i'm sorry we don't have a lot of information on that but here we are again cody bradley thad bell david greenwald are here we got roger espinoza here later on for you a nice in-depth it was about 30 minutes of, a, of an interview with roger espinoza uh, always fun speaking with him, but we do, we wanted to talk about, uh, again, we don't have a lot of information, but we did want to get in here and uh, and talk about the the news about Vox Media and SB Nation. Thad, can you help us here? You're the one that wrote our, wrote the article that explained the lack of information that we currently have. But uh, so what, what's going on here? Tell the people what's happening. All right. Well, uh, and honestly, there's still not a ton of information, but from, from the start, it was a little bit of a surprise gut punch when I received an email saying that Vox would no longer be supporting XB Nation, uh, MLS sites, NHL sites, uh, and podcasts. So while this podcast will go out and it will be somewhere, we'll we'll have to explore the future of that that we're we're having discussions on. Same uh, same as normal until the end of February, at least. Right. At least that's what we understand. And then we will be begging you to go somewhere else maybe potentially so yeah we <laughs> keep your support stay tuned, stay tuned. <laughs> we'll uh we'll, we'll hopefully keep copies of all our uh, current podcasts and reload them if we have to or whatever it takes but yeah see that's yeah. this is us just like thinking out loud here like we, we we don't this is how little information we have i don't even know if i need to go back and start frantically downloading interviews and podcasts from years ago or are I would <laughs> even I yeah I don't know we'll we'll we will obviously update you whenever whenever we know more on that yeah the um so again we d- we don't really have a ton of information yet we've been told that they will perhaps let us keep our sites and monetize it but it's not very definite there's just so much unknown all the SB Nation MLS sites are, are kind of scrambling to figure it out and and do something we all I know. The only thing I know for sure is that the group of people on the Blue Testament and the people who regularly read it, we're not going to go anywhere. I mean, well, when I say we're not going to go where we're, we're not going to go away. We we might end up going someplace different. It might be a different name, it, but it will continue to be people covering soccer in Kansas City, 
because we care to. Okay. There was a few of us on the site that made a little stipend, if they call it that. Uh, I always joke that it was gas money for me to get to the stadium and back or the training ground and back. Gas and money you... and, uh, and to pay for Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it it didn't include any of the other stuff it was like gas money and maybe a stop at you know smoothie king on the way home once in a while but literally it's that so, so we and, weren't doing I, it for money just oh yeah on that note yeah exactly we weren't doing it for money and and that may end up being really all that has changed is that we don't get this small stipend anymore so it you know right. we don't know what's going to happen exactly but it might end up not being all that different anyway from from at least our our listeners and readers perspective. Yeah. We we may try to find some ways to monetize it a little bit more and and we don't know what that answer is yet. Uh, again, the only thing I'm going to guarantee you is that we will as a group in general we'll be covering soccer in Kansas City going forward until I'm dead essentially. <laughs> I started this I backed into pretty much everything I've ever done in my life. I backed into it's I, I wrote a quote in there that was originally attributed to Einstein, but it was probably from Wheeler uh, in difficulty lies opportunity. And I've found that in everything that I've ever come across in my life, I've backed into a lot of things. If I had plans for it, they probably would have went better, but it, but I would not have planned to do it because I would not have necessarily made that change at the very worst. We stay the same at the very best. We evolve, we get better we find a better way to do this. We find a better way to actually maybe monetize it because we're more invested in it now. I ha don't have an answer right now, but we, we're we thinking, we're reading what other sites are doing, we're investigating, we're biding our time a little bit. And then right. if something changes, we'll let you know. And it, and it isn't even all necessarily bad. Like you said, it could, it could end up being better. We can unlock something new. Uh, you know, free of the shackles of the corporate overlords of Vox Media, you know that that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, we could criticize Vox now. No. I'm not. I'm not even all all. Um, it's not even necessarily like a sad thing. It could end up being better. So I'm I'm optimistic about this, at least at the moment. And the main thing I wanted to mention here was that was how much we all appreciate the outpouring of support that we've gotten, individual messages from people. Um, people all over MLS talking about the importance of of uh, the SB Nation sites and, and growth of the, the game and the league. And, um, you know, I was a fan of all of this before I before I became a contributor after just messaging Thad one day. So it is an important thing. That's it's kind of the camaraderie of soccer will will continue just because we're not getting a small stipend doesn't mean that'll go away. Um, so yeah, we're, we're not going anywhere. We really appreciate the support where we may, we may ask for it here again in the future to help us launch something new if we need it. But, uh, yeah, we're not going anywhere. We'll still be here. And, uh, we thank you all very much for, uh, for the kind words and, and all, anyone who's reached out. I was actually amazed at the comments game the other night. I had several people come up to me and, you know, like, can we help? You know, can we start a Patreon? Can we do this? And a couple of them I knew by face and name and a couple of them I didn't know by face and name. They knew me and just started talking like, hey, can we help? So, yeah, we may ask for help. We may not. We'll. Yeah. But again, we're not going away. We just may be slightly different. Uh, the only sadness to this is I felt like we were on a roll with the podcast and kind of adding more podcasts and all that. Now we may have to find a new home and yeah, we were, yeah, we've got, got big plans for a lot of content and you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll go away, just uh different. And those are, those are wrench into things a little bit, but and I figure it and out. We'll have a little less trust of our uh, Vox overlords. Right. Yeah. We've never, I didn't know we hated them before this, but now, but now I guess we're going to leave it at our box overlords. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, we can, uh, we, we can wrap that up for now. Again, we'll keep everyone updated as we get more information, but let's talk some sporting KC. We had a, right. uh, a very, very MLS trade today in which no players were involved, but play money and a slot a roster slot international slot yes so thad tell us tell the people what this trade was today uh 190,000 
uh, trade with Columbus, right? Columbus. 190000 in in JAM specifically. Yes. G-A-M. General allocation money, which can be used to pay down salaries, um, that sort of thing. So seemingly everything that TAM can be used for. I don't <laughs> I'm sure it's different, but every time I read the descriptions, it sounds like they're exactly the same. There is a slight difference. Uh, TAM has to be targeted towards a certain uh, rate, a, a certain salary level, where GAM could be like, you know, guys 300,000 and they pay them down to 200,000 or, yeah. or something like that. So the, um, I think there's a certain limit to where that's at too, but it's kind of not, not a ton of detail needs to be gone, gone into. It's just there, yeah. but yeah, it was, uh, with the Columbus crew and the biggest sign out of this is that everybody is worried all for a while. Like, Hey, if they sign another international player, they don't have slots. They don't have international slots just because they aren't announced yet. I've been saying all along that I'm very, very confident that there has been players have gotten their green cards and they just weren't announced last year year MLS made a new rule where if you get a green card after this the roster freeze date you can't use it it doesn't change anything if you already take an international slot after the roster freeze date you don't get it back with somebody getting a green card except Charlotte they got they got a pass so when players got green cards last year they didn't they didn't announce them because they didn't change anything so I expect sometime in the near future we'll find out that two, three players got green cards. They have enough international slots that they felt they didn't need one of them and could sell it for $190,000 and do something with that money. That was the big news today. That was big news today. They played last weekend, kind of, quote-unquote played, scrimmaged Portland Timbers two in, in two different matches. Yeah, two 30 minutes, two different full, full roster differences. The goalies all played 20 minutes each. And don't read too much into lineups. Don't read too much into anything that you see out of these. We got some They're... video though. Our What's first. that? We got some some very quick video. Yeah. Not very, very quick video that only shows certain things and certain players. So it is real video of soccer being being played. Uh we talked to Roger Espinoza today. He mentioned running in with Diego Chara there on the field. We uh that was a good conversation we had with Roger. Uh, yeah. we don't normally get to go that long in our, in our Tuesday training sessions, we keep it to, you know, 12, 15 minutes normally. So that was good to, to get Roger laid back in the hotel room. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's a good deep dive. What, uh, what's a, what was the highlight of that? What am I forgetting from this interview that we should mention? Oh, uh, the fact that he said I was OG and would be able to be in there in the <laughs> locker room, even if Ronaldo was there. So. <laughs> yes that is definitely the highlight of that one no it was fun we that it was definitely a fun a fun show roger's always a good time he, yeah he's he's always much more talkative in these scenarios and like after a game so yes, yes and he's been around long enough and you guys have been around each other long enough that that he's uh he's pretty laid back with us yeah, yeah some highlights also talking about uh you know his career uh his wife and what she's doing and so his role this year all the new faces and yep. changes in the midfield, what he thinks his role is going to be getting older, aging Tom Brady. Yep. Being a fan of a, of another team and what it means. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, give a, give that a listen where uh, I think we're going to, we can end this section of it unless you have any final thoughts here, Thad. No, I think, uh, I think we'll, whatever other news has come up recently, we can always discuss that on another day or time, but be back. We will be yeah. back. That's that's the key word, right? We'll be back. We'll be back at it again at a later date. Uh, so here is Roger Espinoza. Enjoy. All right, Roger Espinoza. Thank you very much for joining us from Arizona. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you for having me. You signed again for another year. Back in preseason training again. How's the body feeling? It's tough, man. It's tough. Uh, the first week, I would say, was the toughest one. Then second week was a, a lot better. Um, and we'll see how the third one goes. But it started today. So hopefully uh it goes it goes as planned. I'm has, still training, so that's good. Right, right. Has the has preparation changed at all from your from years past? Uh it doesn't change mine much, I guess, you know. Uh I guess 
you know, in terms of like the what they give you the off season, obviously stuff like the evolution is different uh, compared to when, we were, when I was younger, but uh, the mentality um, is always there. So, um, you know, my mentality has always been there and it's the same. It's like being, uh, I don't know if you heard Djokovic, the new uh, uh, 25 is 35, right? That's right. The new 25. I need so, that to be true. Roger, you you mentioned the evolution. So data science and rehabilitation are kind of the forefront of changes in sport now. Like everybody's talking about load management and how to, you know, rest and recover from games and everything. How have things changed from your first year, like your rookie year to now? Um, A lot. I mean, a lot and a lot has to do with what the club has provided for the players. Um, because without that, it's also very difficult to keep going. And, you know, you see a lot of players now around the world that are uh, around my age. Um, they keep playing at a very high intensity. And I think it has to do with, obviously, you know, the mentality you put into everything you do, um, how professional you stay, um, and also what the club provides. And the club has been improving each year, every year, you know, uh, dad was there with us, you know, when we were at Swope, um, great facility, uh, but we didn't have a lot of the stuff that we have at the new facility. So that as a, you know, as an older player, stuff that I use daily, uh, every day. And also the staff has gotten even larger at the club. Um, and so that already is a plus for the player, for any player. So I can see players even going beyond, um, you know, my age and playing for many years at the club just because that has improved like you're saying and and so for us um you know that's been why i'm still at the at the pro level tom brady's like 50 years old you got another you got another decade left to go man <laughs> he also has a has the money to bring people <laughs> to him now. so not only does his organization provide it he also has uh uh guys that do that for him but you know i can't complain the club has done an excellent job uh, for not just me, but you can see you have Timmy, you have Zeus, you see um, Fontas and Johnny, they're on the way. Uh, ben, who's at the club now. And so we have guys that are, are reaching, um, you know, age that back then you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't count on. And now, you know, guys have prepared different, you eat different, and, um, you know, uh, your fitness coach, uh, like he's saying, recovery and all that, you know, it's, uh, they have enough data around the world that, you know, can give you exactly what you need from each player. So the midfield is going to look a little different than it did last year. New faces like Rodoya and, and Flores, and then the return of Gadi Kinda as well. How are, how are you seeing things shape up in the midfield and what do you think your role is going to be? Great, man. I brought all these guys here to freaking win me an MLS cup. So <laughs> there they're, they're under pressure. Uh, it's great. You know, the more guys you have there, the the better it is. Um, you know, we, we sometimes in the past, you know, being a, not a big market team, um, you know, we brought great players, but unfortunately injuries happen and, you know, that can set the club back a little bit. Um, but, you know, we always been a team that fights no matter what happens. Um, you know, we got unlucky at times, but, you know, we're going to have a great group. Uh, especially in the middle. And I always, I'm a great believer that if you win the middle in games, uh, you give yourself a big, huge opportunity to win games at home and on the road. So for us, uh, you know, that is only going to elevate the level of playing of uh, of every player on the team. You know, Peter always talks about how crucial you are to the team. You know, he has raved about you every year since, you know, for as long as I've been following the team. But one of the things that we as fans talk about is how you bring, excuse me, bite to the midfield. Like you're an intimidating person, you're red card Roger. And uh, there aren't a lot of guys in the league like that. You know, there's Diego Chara, there's you. Um, but as you become more of a mentor to younger players on the team, guys like Felipe and Cam, is that a skill set that can be taught or is that you're, you're just born with it? Is it just a mentality thing that you have to have? Um, I would say for sure it can be taught. I mean, um, I remember my high school days. Uh, I played different position than what I played then. Um, and one of the main things of our high school was, you know, be fit. And so if you were fit, then that also set you up to wanting to do more things on the field. 
And so that put me in that mindset, you know, always be very competitive. I was already competitive, but if you reach the level of professional, you already know that every player who reached professional is because they got there because they were competitive. Yes, uh, you need talent, you need a few things, but once you get to that level, you know, everybody wants to win, you're competitive. And so it's something that for sure you have it in you, but also you can be taught. And, um, you know, before I was a midfielder in Kansas City, I was playing many other positions. And I think those positions set me up to be the player I was, I was, I am now. And I was throughout the years in Kansas City. So, um, you know, I would say you have to have an open mind because you can help the team in any other position. And that will set you up to have the mental statement to go out there and, and compete for every play. And, um, you know, just like Diego Shara, you're going to get in trouble in some plays. You get a lot of yellow cards because, you know, you're going to be put in situations where you go challenge, but it's not that you are trying to, uh, you know, trying to hurt the other player, you know, or, or, or trying to get a yellow. You're just trying to help your team and win the ball and put your team in the best position you can to win a game. So stuff like that goes, happens. And, um, you know, I got in trouble many times, maybe with the referees, but not with the club because they understand where I'm coming from in terms of, um, trying to win games, um, you know, and that's very important. Um, you know, I'm not the only player at the club. There's a lot of players who've been through the club, has done the same thing, and I think why the success of the club early in the year, in the early years, was um, was there for us because we we approach games the same way. You mentioned Diego Chara. When you see, uh, you know, every team kind of has that guy. When you run into that guy on the other team. Are you cool? Is there like an understanding? Like, yeah, this is my guy. We, we're kind of on the same page here. Or is it, is there a rivalry or is it like when two motorcycles cross each other on the road? Like, Hey man, yeah, we, we get each other. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of respect. There's a lot of respect on all these players. I know that they didn't get there just hanging out and just trying to avoid everything all the cost of the club. They they're there and he's been there for over 12 years because he understands he wants to win games. Uh, everybody who shows up to the club knows that. Um, you know, you go to the Real, Real Sal late days, so you can see guys on Philly. You can see a lot of players and a lot of teams that last that long. It's because they want to, they're competitive. Uh, you know, they, they're they in training every day. And I know they're nice guys off the field, but, you know, on the field, you got to win. That's your job. Um, and on the field, you know, you pay. If it's a challenge going on, a 50 50 ball, you're going to go for it. You're trying to win it because that's going to push you in the best situation to win games. Um, there's a lot of respect. There's nothing against any of those players. Um, I mean, uh, there was a coach who came the other day, uh, Shara kind of tackled me like this past weekend. And the guy is like, uh, just talking about how many battles he was thinking. Like, I, he's like, I've been at Portland forever. And I was just trying to think how many years, over 12 years, you guys been going at each other. So, I mean, we have a lot of respect. We want to win. Um, game is over and I don't care now. I already forgot about it in terms of like, it's it was on the field and I'm you know happy that nothing crazy happened and you're safe. I refuse to believe that Diego Chara is a nice guy off the field. <laughs> I just had to let that go. Okay, David, go ahead. <laughs> so last year Felipe got like eighteen about eighteen hundred minutes. Um, do you feel like he took the leap, if you will? Like he's kind of started to really figure out how to be a player at this level. And if so, is there anybody who's who's next up? Uh, he has, he has. I mean, he's been through a lot, um, a lot than many of us have uh, at our young career. Um, you know, the league keeps getting more and more difficult. There's a lot more guys coming overseas. So that can only improve his game. Uh, I believe that he's, you know, here in preseason, challenging for that starting spot, um, you know, and that's up to the coach to decide at the end of the preseason, you know, if he goes. But the the the, the season goes on. We know it's a very long season. Um you know, I think um, personally, I was telling him he needs to be consistent. He has to play maybe five games straight, really, really good. And then one game may be normal, and then he has to do it again. And that's how, uh, you know, consistency in this league is what's going to keep you there. And I think he has done it uh, pretty well a lot, you know, uh, over the years. And the club is getting used to him. Um, and that's great to see because, you know, that's a player who grew up in the in, in the club system, who has been through things in his life. And uh, it was only great to see a guy that has mature. Um, and, you know, guys who've been through things he has been is only going to be beneficial for the younger players that are to come. I mean, uh, I would say uh, KP, Kaden Pierre, it's another guy who's, you know, doing doing very well. Um, Dukey and Jake, uh, you know, those are guys that are also 
uh, improving. Uh, Ozzy was was injured a lot last year, and I hope that he he does very well this year. But you know, there's a lot of guys, a lot of academy players, uh, um, Flores who didn't grow up in our system, but you know was noticed by the staff, and um, hopefully he does well at the club. So there's a lot of young guys here that can that can uh, improve, and uh, you know I hope that happens. It's, it's for the best of the club. Hey Roger, it, 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 they were talking earlier about you know you having some bite, and I've always felt like when you were on the field, the the club had a better chance to win. Uh, who maybe is the successor to you in that regard? Like, is there somebody else who has that bite? I mean, we know it's it's uh, uh, you know everybody thinks that, but there's a lot of pieces that are moving the game. Uh, a lot of players. I mean, um, if you look at our teams, you know, you think one player, and uh, I'm saying to be biased a little bit, but. Uh, you know, that is, you know, I appreciate your, your thinking that of me, but, uh, you know, I just think there's a lot of pieces that move in the field and the way it's set up and practice every day uh, that sets me up to be successful. I, I mean, I I like, I mean, I like a lot of guys here. Um, you know, if you go from defense to offense, I mean, hopefully Alan comes back good. That can be a guy that scores a lot. Gotti um, is coming back. Agada came last year with Tommy and, I mean, it's very tough for me to pick a player because all those players bring something to the club that um, that will will give success and 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 give that like winning percentage. I would say, and so it's it's very hard. There's a lot of guys that I mentioned there that you know that are definitely needed in the club and and hopefully they're uh, good this year and 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 later on to to win championships. And then uh, I had another question. The um, one of the trialists there is a uh, Honduran uh, Yason. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, yeah. but I was uh, hoping you were going to pronounce the whole name. I thought you were going to give it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm terrible at that. So they always make fun of me, but uh, yeah, I, I was just curious. Did, uh, did you have anything to do with him coming up on trial? Did you know him? Before of course, I'm this? trying to become an agent. You just broke it there. I'm trying to become an agent. So I'm bringing guys now to the club, you know, now um, to be fair, he's been doing very well. Credit to him. Um, you know, the club took notice and, you know, they decided to bring him to preseason. Um, I'm always been bugging the club that they need to bring a Honduran. They bring two Germans and they're bringing, you know, two Spanish and then they're bringing all these people. I'm like, where's my Honduran friend over here? You know? And so, um, no, the club took notice. He's, he's doing very well. Hopefully, you know, um, they bring some, uh, positive evaluation and he gets to stay here. Uh, but there's a lot of great players here right now. Um, you know, it takes not one day, not a week. It takes a couple of weeks to to see a player. And so hopefully uh, um, he does well here. But, I, you know, I'm just happy that the club, uh, you know, was able to scout him and bring him here for, uh, for a little training. And hopefully he stays. So, Roger, last year, the team was in an unusual place. We don't miss the playoffs very often. Um, how did the team stay together? and keep fighting until the absolute end like what what are the what's the locker room like during a difficult season and how are you guys how are you guys able to rebound and i mean almost... i didn't hear the last part oh, very... you, how did you guys rebound and you know it's easy to get maybe down and just let this the season tail spin but you guys finished super strong and almost made the playoffs so what what are the conversations in the locker rooms to keep fighting yeah, actually, no, we haven't, um, you know, I've had many interviews, never really have interviews. And you're saying we don't make the play as much. And I think that's when the true character of people comes out. And I'm here to say that I'm very happy how everything went because it's very easy when you're doing great and things are going amazing. You see everybody celebrating, running and scoring goals and no one says anything, the fans right behind it, you know, and everything. And I've, you know, in 2019, it was a complete different year because 18 was a great year. And then we were there, you know, we were in Champions League and stuff and it wasn't the greatest year. And then 20 and 21, we played well, I would say, made the playoffs. We got been unlucky. We didn't do well, but we we, we were winning, right? And when you have a, a bad season as the one you did last year, uh, you can see a lot of people giving interviews and stuff. And not once I saw a guy in the locker room, you know, being negative about the whole situation uh, to the media or to the teammates inside the locker room. And, and, you know, like you said, I've been in sporting teams, um, you know, more in playoffs than not in playoffs and winning championships and all that. And I was very happy to see that, that the players, you know, acted very professional. 
Uh, and it's very tough to do that. And the guys did that in the locker room. And, you know, and I'm very happy for that, you know, because it, it can only make you stronger. Um, we all see in every sport, NFL, NBA, um, and soccer, and a lot of other sports that I'm missing that, hey, people start going in the media and, and you know, being negative about other stuff. And I like how my team was positive. And I think that was the result why at the end we almost were pushing to playoffs. And I'm very happy to see that, you know, everybody, you know, Agada came in and Tommy came in and, and, you know, we welcomed them right away, you know, and we knew that this was people that was going to help us win and we didn't take it in any negative way. And, um, I, you know, I can say, you know, I've been here for many years and I'm happy to see that, 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 uh, I mean, not that I know uh, in the media that anybody said, you know, anything more in the locker room, um, you know, and the rest, we leave it up to the, the um, technical staff. And that's for us, you know, it was, for me, it makes me very happy because, um, you know, tough times come all the time. And, and that's when you have to show your true character and, and be a teammate and be a positive mind for the rest of the team. You know, you always got to fight. You always got to call people out, but in a positive way to try to make him better as a player. And so for me, I'm, I'm happy and I'm glad you bring it up um, because um, that's how I feel. I don't know how anybody feels, but in my opinion, um, you know, I always see people in the media going out and saying stuff in this, uh, to me, it's not the way to go. You know, we all make mistakes. Players don't have the best season sometimes. Uh, teams don't have the best season. It's, that's why sports is what it is. If it's not, you know, the Cowboys will win the freaking NFL championship every year, but that's not how it goes. It's, you know, it's it's competitive, it's tough, and um, it's not easy. And, you know, I'm very happy how the guys turn, turn this season around, I would say, you know, to, to end up, you know, I wish we would have made the playoffs, but you know, happy with how at the end turned out. No, that you guys absolutely turned the season around, did the city proud. That's, you know, that the finish of that season is kind of why we're all watching sports. And uh, so I have to imagine you guys are the, that you're pretty excited heading into this, heading into this next season and your wife's team, the current have also had a massive off season and there's a lot of excitement going into their year. Uh, are you expecting big things from, from the current? Oh, they're under pressure now. They're under pressure. I said they were, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, you, nobody expected much last year. Um, just because of, you know, coming back from, from South Lake, um, you know, all the stuff that was going on in NWSL, the team, um, you know, bringing the team together into a, a different city is very difficult. And they, they, did, they did that twice. And so, I mean, there was no consistency in terms of the players. They had no idea where they're going to be. Um, last year, I think it was their first year with new ownership uh, where they were able to cement stuff. Uh, and now, hey, they added some stuff to they're under pressure now. And uh, I think they're going to do well, man. Um, you know, they're putting the pieces together. They have a way to play. Um, and with, you know, players that they brought in, I think uh, uh, they're going to be a contender. Uh, I hope it goes that way. Uh, I'm very excited and, and and happy to see, you know, another year of them playing, um, you know, uh, at our stadium. So I can go anytime I want. I can get a suite anytime I want. I don't know. It's going to be the same. So I'm happy. It's going to be uh, at our stadium next year. But uh, it's going to be great, great games to see. And uh, and hopefully I get to make all the trips like I did uh, um, last year in the playoffs. Are you telling me the husbands and boyfriends don't get a suite in the new stadium? Because that seems like that should be definitely be a thing. Yeah, I probably should start, start that going, right? But, uh, I mean, I know at this point I will fight everybody, even security, if they don't help me get in the stadium. But, uh, no, uh, it's uh, I'm happy for the new stadium. Uh, you know, they're always taking care of the family. So, you know, I'm I'm, I'm happy and and I'm happy low. It's, uh, you know, it's at a happy place. And, and hopefully uh, she gets to contribute as much uh, this coming year. When they uh, made the playoffs last year, I mean, even that great, incredible run where they went 13 games unbeaten, uh, as the as the spouse in this case, is it harder watching her play and, you know, stressing over how they do than maybe sometimes yourself? Or, you know, what's that like? You know, anytime you support a team, you know, when you're watching two teams that uh, you don't care about it, you want the best game to, you know, for both teams, you want to watch the best game. But when, when you're watching this game and you can't be on the field and you want that exact team to win, is difficult. You almost trying to like, like for me, trying to tell low. And when I'm way up there, and I'm like, 
go pressure over there, like, you know, get in between the lines so you can get the ball or like, you know, make space for yourself. But hey, from up top, it's very easy being a fan and telling someone what to do than being down there. So oh, we have a great view from up there. <laughs> yeah. We can yeah. see the game way better. We know all the answers up there. Yeah, right. it's it's very tough. It's very tough. And I mean, they were able to control the environment very, very well. And hey, you can only uh, stand for them. And, you know, they play an unbelievable season. Um, you know, it's kind of how we started, too, with, uh, uh, you know, turning our decade around, I would say, as sporting. You know, we we had a very rough time when we, uh, you know, from the Wizards to to sporting. And then, you know, we went into a losing streak out of, like, 10 games, if I remember. And we started going, like, what, 14, 15 games? Uh, yeah. Undefeated in 2011. And, you know, we kind of turned our weight around there. And, you know, the rest is history. But I hope uh, uh, this happens for them too. You know, like I said, when you start building facilities and raising up, raising up expectation for players, they're only going to contribute with positive things on your club. Has Lo seen the homage <laughs> that she's gotten from her celebration in the NFL? Uh, yes, yes. She's got in tag. She's telling me all the time how, yeah, it's uh, – She's always been doing that. That's what I'm saying. She's been doing celebrations, but uh, that one she did is the one that got everybody. Um, I understand why, but uh, uh, yeah, but she's always been doing celebrations uh, from uh, even when they were at Community Ballpark or Legends Field, it's called now. Uh, she did a few celebrations there too. So um, it's great. And then now from that celebration she did on, they saw all the celebrations. So uh, but, you know, celebrating is great, but that also means that they're winning games and they're scoring and she's scoring. So uh, it's great. Has she didn't see at least you? one great celebration out of you before you retire, Roger. Yeah, I'm trying to imitate, but first I need to score. <laughs> <laughs> you bagged a couple last year. You got a couple. Yeah, I got a good one. I got a good one that I, it was a surprise one. I didn't know it was going to go in, so then I, I didn't have time to celebrate. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, and we were in a tough moment. I, I didn't have time to celebrate. I had time. We, you know, we were just trying to win games and trying to get in the playoffs. Uh, you know, it was it was tough to to think about it. You know, just trying to focus on winning games and you know and being there. Well, right when I score, I was trying to get my teammates to like, hey, we're winning. Let's make sure we do everything the right way and defend well to try to win these games. And that was a game in uh, in uh, Montreal. You know, and so I was like, hey, great goal, but let's get back into it because. You know, we need to win. We need to start winning soon. It's a veteran player right there. Smart head on the shoulders. No, you're good for one of those rockets from outside the box, at least once a season. Once once the season starts, the countdown begins to when Roger unleashes one of those. <laughs> well, hopefully I get the opportunity this year. So we know you were working with the Academy for a while. You were an assistant with the U13s. Um, are you still working on your coaching badges? Uh, you can't anymore other than if you retire – you can go into the other uh, license stuff, but that's as far as you can get in licensing is uh, be licensed. And then the rest requires you to have a team, either Academy or um, MLS Next or work for none MLS Academy, but you have to have a team in order to get the other licensing just because you have to be there every day and you have to work with your team. Um, obviously, I wouldn't have the time to do that. Um now going into the, am I gonna get the more license? I don't know. I couldn't tell you right now. It was a great experience. Um, I couldn't tell you what's gonna happen next. If you do go into coaching, are you gonna play the four three three? Um, sure. I mean, it depends what you have and the players you have, right? I I would say that sporting. Um, when we started the 433, the people who could play on it are still here. The people who couldn't play were no longer there. And that's the style. Every coach has their own style and they pick their the team they want to do it. I mean, usually you see an MLS, people, um, you know, coaches come in and a lot of players go because they're trying to play a certain style and they're trying to bring their own team. Um, there's other players that can adjust to that very well right away. And for us, since we've been together for a long time, I mean, I would say the coaching staff, uh, bring player that can play that but you know we switch to other things to try to uh in some games uh you know it's been so successful for us 
that that's the way it's done. And then if you coach at academy in MLS, you're most likely going to play what the first team in that MLS team does. So uh, as the environment been the most, but I also got to play in in the UK with different, a little bit different style and the national team, a little different style too. Um, and if I was to go into coaching, I'd probably try to get the best out of every coach that I got gotten. Um, and even the negative stuff I got from other coaches, um, something that you use for some positive stuff that not to do hopefully. And, um, but Hey, the players you have, you know, it's, it, 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 it's not easy, but I played in that system. So that could be a system that you want to play in the future. Who knows? Soccer evolves very quick. So. So what were your thoughts when you heard the rumors about SKC pursuing Cristiano Ronaldo? Oh, man. Uh, great. I don't think I would be at this, this hotel. Question. I think we'll be at this hotel that costs $1,000 a night. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'd probably be, I don't know. Uh, a lot of things would have changed. I would have probably a million followers right now. That's so I'd be getting paid by a lot of... That's my, true. Uh, I didn't think about that. You'd get the latent function of the followers. I don't know if me and you would be talking right now, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a lot harder to get this team, I think. <laughs> yeah. Be well, we know we wouldn't be getting him. <laughs> I'll be talking to ESPN right now, guys. <laughs> no, it's uh, no, it would be the same. I mean, you know, that's um, it would have been amazing. It would have been amazing for us, um, for a club like Sporting. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how much of that. Went to the details. I hear everybody talking everywhere, but um, it would have been amazing. That means, uh, yeah, it would have been great for us. I can't so, imagine open locker rooms after games if he was in there. Yeah, you wouldn't been there anymore. You no. would be there, man. Come on, man. You're OG. Hey, <laughs> he probably would have had his own locker room. You you guys would still <laughs> been in the regular one. Are you kidding me? Ronaldo is literally an underwear model. He would have loved this new world where they, they just come right in and he can just be a model at all times like that. We would all be wearing CR7 underwear. <laughs> yeah. he, he would have welcomed locker room photos. Yeah. Well, so Daniel's a huge CR7 guy. Is he doing okay? Like, is he moping around Arizona since the deal didn't come together? <laughs> he would have been starstruck. Uh, Johnny would have given out his number seven. Yeah. Uh, that's one of my favorite aspects of this whole <laughs> it was Johnny trying to keep the number seven. Yeah. Johnny would have been a millionaire just right yeah. off the bat. We, what else? I mean, I don't know. We would probably, I don't know. We'd be probably training at the, at the, what's this? The, the uh, Arizona Cardinal stadium. We'd probably be training in there. Um, All games at Arrowhead, of course. Yeah. Of course, Peter would have had everything locked down so nobody could see it, <laughs> see it right? I mean, we would be flying. Uh, we already do charter flights, so probably get another, like, a different level of charter flight. Yeah, uh, seriously, though. First class, yeah. Ronaldo, Ronaldo being coached by Peter Vermees. Like, how? I, I just, I logistically, I can't even, I can't even picture it. The second Ronaldo stops running and gets yelled at, he's going to be crying. I just, I just, logistically, I can't picture it. Uh, no, I don't see it that way. Um, you're a professional and once you you come and you want to do well into a team, you kind of have to, you know, I think I seriously believe that people has the wrong perception about Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, let's not forget Cristiano before he got to where he's at, he was already at a whole different level. So he worked hard to be out there. And so um, media, no matter what, gets it to a whole new level of everything. They want to sell stuff. And so they're going to say negative stuff all the time. And then there'll be the other media will say positive stuff. I mean, uh, I just think, you know, it's the wrong perception of Cristiano. And I think he gets to a team and I completely uh, believe that he is completely different than what people sees. I mean, um, if you can go to Alan, Alan's perception of him in Mexico and other places has been different. I mean, I guess my perception of myself before, I went to national team or whatever. It was completely different. People forget I was playing college soccer, um, you know, and we all come from somewhere at the end of the day. And I think he has a, a Cristiano, anybody in this world has a good sense of family and he grew up with his mom only. So I believe that uh, he would have taken criticism to, from Peter Vermees and even a teammate to a whole new, you know, thing. I don't think he, he uh, got to where he's at being criticized 
and by any teammate. I'm sure he had people at Man United, people at Sporting Lisboa, national team, um, tell him stuff. So he knows. I think he knows. I, I don't think he got there just by being who he is. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I think we have the wrong perception of a, of a player, in my opinion. We even got a little introspective there at the end. That was great. Full service. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, he would have been okay. Peter has a, his own character too. So, Roger, before we let you get out of here, uh, do you ever think about, this has been on my mind for years now, do you ever think about bringing back the long hair, the long flowing locks? I miss that hair. It added a real flair to your tackles. Uh, my mom is, my mother would also very much like to know about this. <laughs> um, no, I don't think it's coming back. Um, I started, I don't know why I started it. Um, I had young, uh, when I was in high school, I had long hair and then, you know, just started not caring much about cutting my hair <clears throat> and I just let it go. And then it got to where it got. And then I didn't see myself having it short. So I just kept going with it. And then it just kind of created this perception again of, you know, of me playing and just kept it. And then after, you know, after 2014 World Cup, I say, no, this would be my last time with my long hair. Um, yeah, I decided to cut it, but probably not go back to it. Um, Okay. This, this is what, four, Unless Lo wants you to, right? She definitely would not want me to. I can tell you. <laughs> that <already. laughs> yeah, that's more for the soccer look, I think, than than living real life and looking. Yeah, real. yeah. Um, but hey, we all change. We all have our faces. I'm sure that if I go look at a picture of you 20, 30 years ago, you for sure had a mullet. Oh yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I went from long hair to short hair to mullet to. Yeah. Uh, I have like less and less hair every year. So, you know, that's just yeah, how it is. It's, yeah, it's different, you know? And so, yeah. Roger, that is, is wildly interesting. Did you, did you know that he was a fencer? He was a what? Like fencing, like a fence. Like, like fencing, fencing, like, like, yes. yeah. Okay. Dude, yeah. It goes, it goes very deep when you, when you start talking to Thad, there's, there's a lot yeah. to this guy here. I mean, there's yeah. a, there's an aspect of, there's a skill to that game. So, or to a sport. Right. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look easy in the Olympics. Yeah, I, it was not that level. I miss that I didn't get to see young Thad in his heyday. Anyway, yeah. anyway, Roger, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will talk to you again this year, but uh, good luck in the rest of the preseason, man. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks guys. a lot for joining us, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Roger. Alrighty, have a good one.